Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam Wolf, and this video is something a little different in an effort to diversify or diversify some of the content on my channel. I have decided that um, I will use some uh, user suggestions or, or viewer suggestions on uh, as videos, I should say, to do, I guess, reactions to. It's not, I guess, yeah, I guess this would be a reaction video. It's not the normal trailer reaction. Um, it's actually a video that was provided by my own moderator, Huffman, uh, who, if you've been by the stream, you know him quite well. He sent me this video and, and wanted to know what I thought. Uh, now, as far as I can tell, this is actually, this is from Accursed Farms. This is on the whole situation of game preservation and the recent uh, disappearance, essentially, of the crew from Ubisoft. I personally uh, wish I had taken the advantage or the, the, the opportunity to play uh, the crew before it went under. Uh, the problem with the crew is that while it is a <clears throat> single player focused game, it is required to have an internet connection, which I think is absurd because even when you're playing the single player, I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, you could run into other people on online, or at least they will show up in your world or something like that. And, uh, and I don't know, I don't think you will interact with them per se. I think that's a whole different thing on the game, like a, there's a multiplayer aspect to it. But <clears throat> they would just show up as, you know, random cars and stuff like that, I guess. I, I don't know the full thing. I never got a chance to play it. Uh, now that there's no internet connection, now there are no servers that uh, exist for the game, you can't even play the single player game. So there's no offline mode, which is very, very unfortunate. So uh, it's a bit of a problem. I think that um, what Accursed Farms and uh, Mudahar, and uh, I guess a bunch of other bigger YouTubers are actually starting to do is they're doing this, they're starting this campaign to stop publishers from destroying their legacy and destroying the industry by removing games from existence. We, uh, we genuinely cannot keep letting this happen. And uh, I might join them in this fight. It depends on what I have to do. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'll be able to do anything, but if there's something I can sign or whatever, um, I know that there are, there are links to, you know, go to uh, official government websites to, you know, message your representative directly or something like that. So that might be the only way that we actually are able to do anything about it. But let's get into this and, and see what's going on. Hi, I'm Ross, and I enjoy video games, or a lot of them. I also enjoy owning things, you know, like things in my hand or my immediate vicinity that I use frequently. When I walk down the street, I like how people don't usually run up to me and try to take the clothes off my back because it's generally understood by society that those are mine and belong to me. But see, just by me saying those things, we already have a problem. This is why this is why I've been going back to physical media because although it's not a 100% band-aid on uh, on what's going on here, it's at least well within my rights to say I have the physical copy. This is not a good example by the way. I have a physical copy, therefore I own this. Now, is that still true? Technically, no. I mean, I can't just like burn these and resell them. That's just not within my rights. That's the as far as copyright goes. When I purchase these for a an amount of money that was asked by the publisher, I should have full rights to use these at any point in history or at any point in time that I so choose. I shouldn't be locked out of being able to play these games even after the fact that I bought them. That's the problem that we're we're facing right now. I can put this in my PS2 and it'll work. I could put this in my PS3, one a, a system where you know the online capabilities are being questioned at this point uh, as to how much longer it's going to be online. As far as I know, this will still work even when those servers go offline. So Yeah, you can probably see where this is going. The video game industry has a lot of problems. Like, a lot of problems. I think regulators have no idea, actually. But there's one problem in particular I've been hating for decades, and it's getting worse and worse. 
and that is destroying video games so that no one can ever play them again. And I don't mean your brother sticking a disc in the microwave so that your <laughs> copy is destroyed. I Ooh, mean everyone's. That would There's a send really specific over, over way this happens. Just as a quick refresher, for most of gaming history, this hasn't been much of an issue. Nope. Most games contain the code that interfaces with the hardware and run the game, and that's the whole story. Now, for online multiplayer as games, I said, it's a little different. It's basically the since the PS4 generation, so the for the last that runs 11 the game, years, then other people would it's connect been brought to into it, question. Or sometimes give you the software to make that server a standalone thing. Not even the PS4. I would say the PS3, just because there have been PS3 games that have been delisted from the digital storefront. So, okay, I'll... I'll amend that in saying that it was it started with when digital copies of video games with the PS3 era started to emerge. Um, the convenience outweighed the need to preserve the games and people just got used to it. And now that it's kind of like rearing its ugly head at the at the idea that we don't own these things, um, we're just renting them essentially. Now people are starting to pay attention thing and connect to that but over time more and more companies decided hey instead of letting the player host the game what if we did it instead well there are right. pros and cons to that but that can be a valid approach De uh, dedicated um servers were something that everybody wanted just because it, it offered a more consistent connection compared to peer-to-peer -peer connections which would uh, host a player's system like a PS3, like a PS4, whatever, as the server for the rest of the lobby to connect to. And depending on the person's connection, which back in those days, back in the early PS3 era, um, <laughs> may not have been great. I mean, broadband was basically new at that point or still kind of new. And uh, not everybody had it. So to get somebody with a good internet connection as, and to be the host was the problem. And so for years and years and years, people kept asking for dedicated servers. And now that we have him, now we're asking for peer-to-peer -peer connection again because <laughs> we, can't, we can't have this happen to our games. But what are you going to do? In theory. We'll find out. But here's the problem. The games industry has a horrible horrible track record of maintaining its own games. There was a large study EA conducted last year that showed all. only 13% of published video games are still available by the publisher commercially. Whew. So what happens when the publisher 13%? takes over the responsibility That's of it? running the game? Well, it's usually pretty good while they support the game. Then when they stop, it's a complete nightmare and has been responsible for destroying more video games than any other practice. This is why this is why stuff like X-Link Kai is so popular. Uh, it's a program I used to use back in the day to get older games like SOCOM, for example, on the PS2, which doesn't have internet, like it doesn't have service anymore. The PS2 has been out of service for years at this point, but I could connect my PS2 to my router and then use X-Link Kai to route the PS2 through the servers that people have set up to ho to host SOCOM, and I could be playing SOCOM this uh, these days because of other people who have created these dedicated servers, so to speak. Wrong, wrong. That's screen. a big shift because the industry is trying to get users to go from a model where they get to keep their game regardless of when support ends. I used to actually to like one buy stuff from a website forever. called DirectToDrive.com. For where companies that you would do literally this, buy the game and you would the download all the files to your any system. Form, forget being available commercially is a lot worse than 13%. Mm. I did an informal investigation on it a few years ago. Games as a service is, is fraud. 3%. Yes, it is. I would have to agree. I think that and the sad part may have is, is that even lower since I did that. The sad part that about games as a service is that I'm also a sucker to play, you know, for playing them. I do love <clears throat> a lot of the games, not because they're games as a service but because they're fun, essentially. They are fun for me. I find enjoyment in them. But, uh, you know, the idea of FOMO that a lot of people experience with certain certain games as a service is a real thing, and it's not pretty. From my perspective, this has felt like a slow-moving coup to take away ownership from more and more people over time. So video game publishers are making billions selling you a game as a good not telling you how long it will last, purposefully killing it later so yeah. you're left with nothing, but then they get to keep your money. 
Now don't confuse this with rentals. Rentals are sold as a service and tell you exactly how long they last. A customer who rents something is informed. Video game publishers don't want that. Yeah, because yeah. they know I, I forgot I forgot to mention that um Direct to Drive was bought out by Gamefly like years ago. So they don't exist anymore. If you go to directordrive.com, it doesn't exist. Uh, you can get the you can go to the Wikipedia page to see what happened, but they were bought out by Gamefly and Gamefly as a service. Now that I mean, like he said, they rent you the games that you want to play, and if you don't want to purchase the game, which they do give you the option, you can just return it, and then you're done. Oh, if they put on the box exactly how long the game will last then that will hurt sales a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's important to withhold and that information And it's really sad with Lawbreakers because it honestly because looked awesome. Because customers are used to video games lasting but because Overwatch existed. forever, more or less. <laughs> now you Overwatch is dead, from the essentially. 70s to, it's dead to me. Still work today. You could have bought games from See. the 90s with online multiplayer that connect to the internet that still work today. Because of peer-to-peer. -peer. Even if the companies that made them no longer exist. Mm -hmm. But a lot of publishers like to place modern video games that are designed to die, but they won't tell you when, right alongside ones that last. So this is this is a good example of of games, as he says, that will work indefinitely, as opposed to ones that will not. Uh, w uh, this will stop working after one year, but the buyer is not told this. <clears throat> Overwatch, the original Overwatch, which I want back, or I want my money back, Blizzard. That stopped working after six years because they overrode it with Overwatch 2, which is a worse and more inferior product. Um, and then Gran Turismo Sport, which is interesting. I didn't realize the sport version of the game actually was doesn't work. Uh, however, the developer will end up fixing it to work indefinitely. So that one actually got, it, it sounds like it got patched by Polyphony Digital to work after the fact, which is good, but we should have, to have it come to that last forever so they can try to cash in on customer confusion because the average person believes they are buying something mm -hmm. now i personally hate this practice because art has innate value to me and while it's debatable if video games are art they undeniably contain art so seeing games destroyed to me is the same as if someone were to walk into an art museum and start torching the paintings and it's Pretty much. To injury that companies that do this face no penalties, nor is there a good reason for them doing it. I won't get into the details here, and you may hear excuses as to why companies have to destroy your games, even though they largely didn't used to do that, even for online multiplayer. But what I found is that the people saying that tend to either be uninformed or else incredibly unimaginative. Now, and can only see things one way. Now, he he reiterated what I had mentioned at the beginning of the video where their their reasoning is not sound ever. It's never a good excuse. It's just because they said so. They took it offline because it's their property and they can do what they want with it, which is wrong in so many on so many levels. Um but there's also I've also got an issue personally even though i play them i do have an issue with online only titles as well what the first issue was the fact that you know when a game had when trophies and achievements became part of the uh industry and really became one of the standards that are necessary in video games these days um as an engagement practice essentially uh, and it worked because i love my trophies you guys know that um it brought about multiplayer trophies, which I don't like because of this situation. Whereas if you did not play a game enough, this is a perfect example, Bad Company 1, Battlefield Bad Company 1. I will never be able to finish that trophy list ever again. Or SOCOM Confrontation, there's a perfect example, an online-only title with trophies that I can no longer obtain because they took the servers offline. And so... <clears throat> That's a pretty good example of why online only is a bad idea, first and foremost. And secondly, why online trophies are stupid. Online trophies, online achievements, whatever the case may be, whatever you want to call them, they're dumb. Because when that server, when those servers go offline, those trophies and achievements are gone. That list will go unfinished. And if, 
if there's anything that I hate more than FOMO, it's my list being incomplete. I hate it. It grinds my gears that those lists are just forever in, uh, incomplete. I hate it. When we order the pancakes, they're going to bring the maple syrup. The maple syrup is supposed to be on the table before the pancakes. Of course, when they bring the maple syrup after the pancakes, it'll definitely be too late. How is that going to be too late, huh, right? Yeah, talking with people who defend this practice can feel a lot like that. I'm reminded of when Microsoft was sued by the Department like of Justice background. for bundling Internet Explorer with Windows, and Microsoft claimed oh, it was yeah. impossible yep. to separate it from Windows 98. It was even another it excuse. Wasn't even with Windows 95, it when was it another launched. excuse. And through the power of hindsight, they actually did remove it from Windows years later. What a surprise! So it was possible earlier. It's possible in the future. But it's impossible right now because the company has spent a lot of time trying to make it difficult. Yeah. That is such a good analogy for what is happening with games. You have no idea. Anyway, no matter how you look at it, this is such an obvious assault make sure that on this consumer is actually... rights. And in any other yes, industry, a company destroying what they sold you would be illegal. If only there was something we could do about this. Well... As it so happens, we have the best opportunity ever to take action on this. A few months ago, the company Ubisoft announced it was shutting down a game of this nature called The Crew. Now, The Crew, I think, is a flawed but remarkable game, but none of that matters here. What matters... Keep in mind, this game came out in 2014. So it's 10 years old, and at its 10-year anniversary, not exactly to the date, but on its 10-year anniversary, they shut it down. For whatever reason, even though it's primarily a single player game. Matters is it had at least 12 million players. So this affects a lot of people. It's pretty and good. Ubisoft is headquartered in France. That's pretty good for a game that supposedly was bad. And France has some of the strongest consumer laws in the world. See, this isn't really about the crew or even Ubisoft. It's about trying to find a weak link in the industry so governments can examine this practice to stop publishers from destroying our games. Outside of the United States, this practice is very hazy legally. Many governments don't even have laws regarding this. I'm not kidding, more on that later. If we can find even one major country to penalize this practice, that might fix everything. Because the thing about letting you keep your game it might. is it's not that expensive for companies to do it, especially no, if it's not. a known requirement from the beginning. I mean, here, again, I'll reiterate, if the Avengers can put in an offline mode into their game, well, every company can do it then, right? Then it's almost negligible. So if a company knows they have to let you keep your game in one country, they may as well make it global policy because then they've already done the work. It really could take just one victory to end this. So even if you have no interest in the crew, if you just want to keep your games, keep watching. Mm -hmm. There's more. It's not, it's, about and, and that's, that's, I think, the ultimate thing that we have to take away from this video. This isn't about the crew in uh, specifically or in particular. It's not about this one game. It's about the example that this game is setting, the precedent that this game is setting. Because it's not the first game to do it, but it certainly won't be the last game to do it, where it shows the power that these companies have. Another great example is before the official release of the Stellar Blade demo, a <clears throat> the demo released by accident a few weeks before then. And people were like, oh, it's early. And they started playing it. And within hours, Sony, 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 Sony literally deactivated the demo from being downloaded and literally took it off people's systems. But it's kind of insane to a point where to, to the fact that we are allowing the companies to go this far. And I'm not excusing myself of this. I love my PlayStation. I will love PlayStation until the day I die. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm not concerned about the fact that they can just do that. Even though it is their system and they can update it and do whatever they need to do with it. But at the same time, how, why is it okay that they can access our drive and just, oh, let, let me take that back. It's it's as if somebody, a, a, a waiter or waitress comes up and gives you your coffee. 
walks away for about two minutes, then comes back and just takes it back. Even though you didn't say you didn't like it or anything like that, that's that's actually, I'm surprised I came up with that analogy. This shutdown has caused me to go on a research odyssey to see if I could find any possible way to get governments to examine the legality of destroying your games. I have been waiting for an opportunity like this. This problem has been going on for decades, yes. but it usually only affects a small minority of players that are too dispersed to do much. Most have moved on when a game is killed, and the industry has been counting on that lethargy. So an event like this that's big enough to do something is like the planets aligning. We have to take Free action Free Realms. On it. Wow, that's but an I old one. I do not think I'm the ideal person I tried person it. It wasn't that great. I'm not a legal expert. I have limited reach. This is why Honestly, single players are becoming way more prominent lately effort. because people are just seeing this, this kind of crap and just like, but if you care about this I want to own my games. I want to be able to play my games and single player up. games usually are the and only ones you can I guess play, there but is one thing unless that they have online components. This, and that at least with me, you're getting maximum hustle. I have decades worth of resentment on this issue. You know when a dog is eating and somebody yanks away its food bowl, even nice dogs will get angry or even attack you? That's how I feel about the industry on this. I, it's like it's like we're of one mind, me and this guy or literally any other gamer. We're, we're all thinking in the same realm of like, how is this okay? It's not. It's not okay to give somebody or something food and then just take it away from them while they're still eating it. You know what I mean? This. Since I started this campaign, I've spent hundreds of hours on it, talked to multiple lawyers, worked with over a hundred volunteers, sent hundreds and hundreds of emails, trying to chase down every single lead I can find. I have been relentless on this. I've felt it too. In the game trailer for Yes, Your Grace, the king is hearing so many requests from his subjects that at one point he just keels over from it all. <gasps> yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. <laughs> and after months of research, yes, I have found ways we can do something. Not just long shots either, but really viable routes. I have found what I think are all the agencies worldwide best equipped to take action on this issue. I've also found dead ends, a lot of dead ends. In fact, I found so many that if I had known earlier what I know now, I could have saved myself at least a month's worth of work. Like I said, this is an amateur effort, so I'm trying to make up for that with even more hustle. And because I'm treating this like it's my only shot, because it probably is, I'm not stopping at the crew. Remember, the crew is just a means to an end, which is to stop companies from destroying your games. Mm -hmm. So rather than just getting the government to interpret the law, I figure why not go to the source while we're at it? So in addition to the consumer to the action, we're also pursuing government petitions. Yeah. Now hold on, I know what some of you are thinking. These are not normal petitions, where you get a bunch of people to sign to show that people care and hope companies do the no, right thing. No, all right, this is, this is not a change.org kind of situation i guarantee you there's something different that he's doing i'm sure with his petitions but also again i believe in this video's description uh that he provides the sources to uh contact your representative in your country or representatives uh in your country or in your, or your state um hell i mean i even saw a brief snippet of it before uh, in another video where it's you can contact the FTC themselves, you know, so it's it's really not that. Well, I don't know if, if that other guy is is in charge still. Um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, he gives us the resources. Also, you know, he spent he, he mentioned how long it took him to actually work on this. By all means, please go watch this video without my commentary if you don't want me to keep stopping the video and stuff like that. I'm going to try and keep it going for long stints of uh, time, but you know, if there's something that I want to say, it's kind of hard for me to formulate my thoughts while somebody else is speaking. It doesn't really work out very well for me. So I'm going to be stopping the video periodically. Um, so if you want to go support him, please do. Uh, I'll, I'll leave a link to the video in the description, obviously, um, and uh, support his work because I think what him and other YouTubers are doing uh, is very, very important. Come on, guys. Give me more credit than that. <laughs> no, these are government initiatives. Where if we pass a certain threshold, <coughs> the government has to respond. It's the law. 
and for some of them are almost guaranteed to be debated. He's using the law. Yeah, we'll see. Against but these this companies. this is how a lot of laws get made. So what's in these petitions? Well, it varies for every country since they all have different rules, but they all share the same fundamentals. I tried to design the fairest proposals I could that still solve the problem. Yeah, remember and keep in mind i think he i don't know if he'll go over this but he also takes into account free to play online games like fortnite and stuff like that and he makes an argument i have seen i saw mudahar's uh video on this i he didn't he didn't do like a, a reaction to this he kind of just went over the whole thing and he said that he's i think he's also putting his hat in the ring uh where um he takes account of free-to-play games like Fortnite, where if, if you purchased skins or anything in the game for any amount of money, that those things, even after the game's gone offline, will be available to you to look at, to, you know, do whatever you want with uh, in some respect. I don't know why you would bother if the game's not online, but, you know, maybe there could be, they could implement an offline variation of the mode or of the game that you, maybe you and your friends could play as one of you is like the host, peer-to-peer -peer connection. Uh, can you imagine that if Fortnite actually updated itself to be a peer-to-peer -peer connection game so that you could just keep playing it indefinitely? I think that'd be sick, personally. Um, and then they just put a whole bunch of skins in the game for you to earn while playing the game instead of just having to buy them because it's like, well, we've already moved on. We're not going to make any more money from this, so here's a whole bunch of crap. That'd be nice that naysayers i'm trying to solve the problem the problem but that the I'm also publishers trying to have keep created the scope as narrow as possible i am not trying to reform the games industry i we am should. just trying to stop companies from destroying games that they've sold to you the gaming industry needs a reform i'm telling you right now given given what we've been seeing the last 10 years uh a reform is much needed at this point and i think the people that do it are not only YouTubers like him and gamers like him, but also the indie devs. The indie devs are actually like doing a really huge service to the industry right now by showing us that it is possible to create AAA quality with a modest budget. And it's it's starting to it's starting to show drastic number changes. That's Stellar it. Blade being so a perfect with that example. In mind, while the game is being supported, any game... Not out yet, but I guarantee happen. you it's going to sell millions. Companies could do whatever they wanted. We're going for a light touch. It's only once support ends that requirements will kick in. The first is any game sold or licensed, for those of you who want to be pedantic, will be required to be left in a functional state when support right. ends. This does not mean a 100% perfect state, but it means a hell of a lot Something better than that's completely playable. inoperable. It would also require no connection to the publisher or affiliated parties in order for it to continue functioning. Yeah. So it would need to be patched to either be offline or have private hosting only. Like I said, imagine if Fortnite had a peer-to-peer -peer offline mode and you could still play with your friends doing whatever, you know? That'd be great. It's the only way. Anything less and the game dies. And yes, this would include DRM that needs to connect to the internet. Screw you, DeNuvo. And because I'm being forced to go to all this trouble, I really want to end this. So this would also apply to games with microtransactions. Except we didn't say microtransactions since these were in plain English. So this would cover free-to-play games. Additional game because assets or features sold. if you've been sold something like a virtual horse, but then the publisher destroys the game, well, now you can't access your horse. And now you've, you've basically had money stolen. That's why that's why I said I want my money back for Overwatch 1 because Overwatch 1 no longer exists. So they basically stole $120 from me. Stir possession is a term for what I'm... And I never bought loot boxes in that game, by the way, because you just earned them as you leveled up. And leveling up was pretty simple. You just turn your brain off and you're, you've leveled up. Um, so I never purchased anything in that game. I just bought the game and I played it and I played it and I played it. Everything I earned in that game, while transferred over to Overwatch 2 with issues uh, at the beginning, uh, Overwatch 1 is no longer a thing, and I bought Overwatch 1. I didn't buy Overwatch 2. I'm talking about here. And I'll never finally, let it go. These rules cannot be superseded by end user license agreements, since that's how companies have been getting away with highway robbery in the first place. Because nobody, and they know this, because nobody, myself included, reads the end user license agreements 
ever. They never read them because they make them so absurdly long. Who in their right mind is going to fire up a game and then spend two hours reading a wall of text of legal garbage? Why can't the end user agreement just be like, hey, please don't copy this game, don't resell it, and we own everything that's in it. Three simple lines that you can just say yes or no to. And if you say you don't agree, that doesn't give them the right to be like, well, you can't play the game now. Because if you, that's the, that's why everybody just gave up and just agreed to every single end user license agreement. Because if you say you don't agree with it, like say you press X or circle on the PlayStation, excuse me, cross or circle, it's X, uh, on the PlayStation controller, to say accept or do not accept, if you decide to hit circle and do not accept the end user license agreement, if you just happen to read it, they say, well, I guess you don't want to play the game then. So they don't allow you to play the game. There is no getting past that license agreement without saying you accept it in order to play your game. It's absurd and it's just legal garbage. It's like, wait a second, I bought this. And I should be able to play it whether I agree with your license agreement or not. Like, it, it, it shouldn't matter. If you don't agree with it, then it's like, oh, well, then you can't access the multiplayer functions. But I, I don't know. I don't know how to get around that. That's why it's. That's why I'm not a lawyer. And that's why all this legal crap is so annoying. Because you have to accept it. Otherwise, you can't play the game. It's absurd. The whole thing. Especially in the U.S. There's no <clears throat> point in having rights if you have to sign them away just to play a game. I'm sure a few of you right now are scoffing at this proposal. No. But just remember Internet Explorer, guys. It was impossible. And that's Allegedly. it pretty much. Yeah. Now, one thing we left off the table, but it's kind of an open secret we'd be willing to compromise on, or at least I would, would be if a company doesn't fix the game, but they give you all the information, tools, software, and so on, so that a programmer could be reasonably expected to get it working again. Yeah, that's an <coughs> acceptable substitute. Though, you mean giving us the source code, essentially. Helping on this was strong. And they didn't trust companies not to abuse a provision like that. And they could be right. So we left it out of the proposals. We also left out this applying to all software and restricted it just to video games. Now, don't get me wrong. I personally think all commercial software should have these provisions also. But this is already such an uphill battle that expanding the scope yeah. would invite many more enemies yeah. and weaken our odds. Remember, I am single issue. The point is Well, and here and here's here's the thing, you know, and that's that us also of course brings up the um the problem of like cloud-based solutions. Like all of Adobe software is now on cloud. You don't own there's no master uh, collection, no master suite anymore. These companies want full control, and the cloud is the only way to do that. And I think essentially that's how everything's you know happening at this point is that these companies want everything to be on the cloud because of convenience for not only the end user to just, hey, instead of having to go up and go to a brick and mortar store to buy their copy of the game, they buy it digitally. And then the convenience of the company to say, you violated our policies, give me that back. You're, you're giving away your ability to own something and hoping that the company that you're buying it from continues to support it, which is not a great idea. Is Even if you don't own the crew, you'll still be able to do something if you live in one of the countries where these petitions were launched. <clears throat> this is a multi-pronged attack. I have prongs for everyone. <laughs> well, no, but a lot of people. It's complicated. Remember a while back when there were so many versions? And you know the worst part is, is that while you can't buy the crew anymore on these digital storefronts, I have it in my library. I could still download it. It just won't do anything. So what's the point, right? There's a watchdogs for sale that somebody made a spreadsheet on how to buy the game. Oh, God, it's I remember that. That, that is bad, so... But it does have a lot of variables. What I found is that what That was a nightmare. And that was Ubisoft, again. And whether they own the crew or not. But even then, it can still be confusing. So I've seen it as a priority to make this as easy as possible for everyone. To that end, I've been working with volunteers to launch a website to do just that. 
stopkillinggames.com. I hope you can remember that name. It's pretty it has easy. the two G's there back to back. That might throw some people off. It's a multilingual website that can easily steer you exactly where you need to go you to go. have maximum impact. Some people can do multiple things. So I even tried to prioritize your options a little bit. In fact, you can even just stop watching and go here if you want. There's nothing else you have to know that's not on the site. We have blazed a trail for you to hit back against the industry. All you have to do is follow it. We've done all the hard parts for you. See, people can complain about the games industry, but the reality is all internet comments are meaningless. None of your comments matter mm -hmm. unless a government official is reading them. Right. That's what this is. Right. In fact, if you've gotten lost by anything I've said, here's all you need to remember. File complaints if you can. Yep. Sign petitions if you can. Yep. Get others to do one and two. And you can do that at StopKillingGames.com. I think I'll take my chances and, and do it myself as well. I think this is important. And uh, if, if I want to put my money where my mouth is, I'm going to I'm gonna do exactly this. I'm going to try to <clears throat> go through the, the process because if we go directly to the government, like you said, government pol politicians don't go to YouTube and read comments, not all the time. It's a very small percentage if they do. Um, so they're not going to see any of this and and <clears throat> making YouTube videos like this and it's just screaming to the void, essentially. So the only way that we can actually take action as a community and as gamers is go to stopkillinggames.com and file a formal complaint with our representatives or with our government uh, agencies. And for us in the United States, that's the FTC and I, uh, I can't remember the other uh, agency, but like you fill out the proper forms and everything. Prove a point, you know, let's let's prove a point here and get get these companies held accountable for for their thievish actions. OK, all right. You know what? I think I will stop it here. Uh, I was thinking of watching the whole thing. But now, he, like he said, we could just stop watching after that last section and just, you know, go to the website and and do the thing we need to do. Um, now he's just talking about his whole battle plan. But I think we got the idea of what's going on here. <clears throat> And I think it's important that we, I'm going to leave this a like, I think it's important that we, um, we really, as a community, we come together and uh, really take them, take them to the cleaners, take these publishers to be held accountable. And the only people, sadly, that can do that are our governments. Um, as much as we may not like them, as much as we may not agree with them, they are the only ones who can actually cause change but essentially we're the ones causing change we are just forcing them to do that the fact that we allow this to happen with our video games is a big issue like we might have been okay with music being digital with movies and tv shows being digital but video games are a far more interactive medium and i think that's why we're not okay with it with the video games because we actually spend time with these things, hundreds, thousands of hours with these games, interacting with them, interacting with other people in them. And for companies to take something away that we are actively using, it's absurd. When you say it out loud, when you think about it, it doesn't make sense. And it doesn't make sense for anything else. Anything else. You can see all this stuff while it's pathetic to look at but all this stuff if somebody could come and take my statue of alduin that i bought 13 years ago i would lose my shit. i would lose my mind because that's mine i bought that but that's the same idea so if some if i bought a bed i bought this bed this is my bed what if the place I bought it from just came into my house and said, give us that back because we got to sell it to somebody else or the licensing agreement on the foam that we used is up. So we have to take it back. It sounds crazy, doesn't it? So go to stopkillinggames.com and contact your local government or your, your national government, federal government, whatever. Contact your agencies 
uh, by using that website's instructions and, and follow the instructions to a letter. So that way we can enact this change and hold companies like Ubisoft and EA and Activision accountable for their nonsense. But that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm gonna leave a link to this video in the description. You can watch the rest um, without my commentary. Unimpeded, I know some of you hate the fact that I stop videos to react to them, but yeah, you, you clicked on a reaction video. Definitely leave a like. I think we need more eyes on this because uh, 250, uh, 205,000 views is not enough. And this was three days ago. So hopefully we can uh, we can increase the number of views on this video and get more eyes on it because I think it's extremely important that uh, people know about this. But please join me again in the next video where I actually got another video to uh, from my dear brother uh, to check out and uh, give my thoughts on that because uh, he asked me you know what I thought. Um, so I'll be doing that. I think it's on Nvidia's AI that they implemented and uh yeah i'm not i'm not fully aware of what that's all about so that'll be an interesting video but be on the lookout for that one as well but until then i'm adam wolf and i'll see you guys later